Lizardmen versus Empire is a relatively common matchup. You do see it pretty frequently from both sides. I mean, Empire, picking Empire, typically you'd ban dwarfs. In a tournament, at least, you'd ban dwarfs. And vampire counts most likely for most players. Uh, you're probably going to see green skins or lizardmen as the counter pick. And also sometimes, you know, lizardmen picking them, you might occasionally see empire as a counter pick as well. In my opinion, it's a pretty even matchup. Uh, it is one that empire, I think, relies to a degree on its shooting uh, to a pretty large degree. Uh, and Lizardmen, you can kind of do a few different things. I think you have a little bit more flexibility in this matchup currently, although with the Cavalry beta, might help a little bit. Although, again, Cavalry for Cavalry, and weirdly enough, uh, Lizardmen actually do trade really well into Empire. But anyway, this replay from Koops, he's got Oxyodl here with some Saurus Spears, one Saurus Spear, three regular Saurus Warriors, Coldwind Riders to trade into said Empire Knights, if there are any, some Skink Cohorts up front with some Javelins, Two javelins, two regulars, feral cold ones, and a nice flying skirmish force here. He's got some chameleon stalkers, regular chameleons, along with three pterodon riders, and the caster, skink priest, lower beasts up on his bro. Uh, on the empire side, we got some outriders here, war wagon plus Marcus. A couple of more outriders, a couple of hand gunners, two great swords, uh, spearmen with shields, flagellants, sigmar sons. And probably, yeah, net here. So double character net. I think this is technically illegal according to tournament rules. I'd have to double check. But uh, war wagons as well out on this other flank. So definitely plenty of shooting on the Empire side. One thing to note, war wagons actually are currently bugged. They're not doing as much damage as they should be. Just kind of be aware of that. But a little bit of a summon manticore here. It is a lot of Winds of Magic to use. But it does kind of draw out one of Marcus's nets, which are a very much limited resource. So, interesting kind of ability play on both sides. That Manticore is going to get torn to shreds. Not only wasting the net, but also a little bit of ammunition as well. But nice Amber Spear hits Marcus, kills a few of those Outriders as well from the air. Pretty nicely done by the Skink Priest. Oxyodl hanging well back, out of range and out of sight right now. Let's see how it goes. I mean, obviously, Flagellants, they'll trade decently into Source. They will get pounded by that high weapon strength. But they should be able to get some good damage in in the meantime, and obviously they won't run away. They will continue to fight until the bitter end. Let's see. Ooh, Manticore does get a cheeky little charge in here, and there's no healing for the Empire, so all this damage on Marcus is basically for free at this point. Uh, even after the net and all the, you know, shooting, this thing is still most likely just going to die to its timer. I guess it technically does route there, but some really nice initial kind of free damage on Marcus. Is great to see. Looks like he's now shooting over into these chameleon skinks. He is, his missiles certainly do enough damage that they will finish the models, despite the missile resistance of these chameleon skinks. They're definitely going to take quite a bit of counterfire here from Outriders and from uh, War Wagons. Outriders actually for Skirmish Cavalry have a really good damage output. Armor piercing damage wise, really nice range as well. So rough situation for the chameleons to be in, but they're soaking a lot of fire. And what it means is that the Empire is not shooting any of these other units on the approach. Not that they're really in range until this point, but another nice Amber Spear trying to take out Marcus there. Clever Girls come in just disrupting this position here, uh, not allowing the Outriders to all get set and concentrate their fire on one opponent. So they definitely should be trying to concentrate those Pterodons at this point. Here comes the big melee engagement here. We've got another net over on those Coldwind Riders. Even though they are netted, they still got their charge animation, though, so they can still blob up around those War Wagons. A little bit of a bunny buggy interaction, but... A bunny interaction. There's no bunnies in this game yet, at least. You, the Monty Python. Uh, anyway, Flagellants in the front line. Great Sword's also going to get in there. It would be nice for the Empire to have a uh, Baronis Time Warp at this point to maybe try and juice up some of this infantry fight, win it a bit faster and more decisively. But still nets for Marcus, netting some of these Cold One Riders over here, some of the Pterodon Riders, allowing his little concave of gunpowder to continue firing here. They're going to fire and retreat, continuously try and do so while the uh, Lizards counter skirmish with the Pterodons. Pterodons are going to come down to fight in melee, a little bit risky, but they do have the backup of these Cold One Riders as well. And, uh, you know, Skinks getting routed by Flagellants to be expected, but surprisingly the Pterodon Riders really haven't taken much damage at all here. And just keeping the Empire missile line disrupted, you can see he's really not, like, concentrating fire on, on any individual single target here, which would be quite devastating. Instead of having to continuously, like, reposition here, Oxyodl now 
also coming forward, getting some shots, starting to get some hits. Looks like he's going to be targeting Marcus, which is definitely the right call at this point. If he can finish Marcus off, that's going to be significant. Leadership blow to the Empire. Ooh, another Amber Spear coming in. Does contact Marcus. He's getting plinked by uh, Oxyadl. Due to the fact he's a small target, Oxyadl's multi-shot isn't going to land all the hits on him. But, oh, path through a war wagon there. <laughs> the uh, Pterodons even still are going to route him off. And that is good position for the Luzerman to be in. Granted, there's still a lot of great swords to have to deal with and a lot of missile troops, but this uh, kind of overpressure here with the Cold One Riders, the Clever Girls, all doing a great job keeping these missile units occupied. The Pterodon Riders also. One great thing about Pterodon Riders is, uh, you know, they do cause fear. Even though they don't have the best melee stats, they're still all right for a flying missile unit trying to fight in melee. Certainly against something like handgunners, they do have noticeably better stats in terms of attack and defense. And that fear means that they are able to kind of come in and route these guys, typically. A little extra skate support as well. Humble Cohort's going to get in here and bop some of those handgunners on the back of the head. <laughs> Marcus goes down the skink overwatch fire. And now at this point, I mean, there's still quite a bit of Empire infantry left, but the missile presence of the Lizardmen should be able to start working some of that down. I mean... Uh, Pterodon Riders at risk of being finished off here, but a lot of the high-value stuff from the Empire is starting to suffer. And, I mean, we've still got some Stalkers alive over here. In terms of Saurus, there's still a pretty good pocket of Saurus over here, and Oxyalo can pretty much kite most of the rest of the units to death. So, <laughs> sitting here in danger close, just popping these war wagons, like, hey, you know, I was not around for this DLC, but I'm still not happy about the whole, you know, Marcus versus Nakai thing. <laughs> just blows up the war wagon point blank. You gotta love that. Straight shotgun blast to the face with the blowpipe. Pretty fantastic. Empire's gonna continue fighting though. I mean, it, uh, do have a little bit of presence of missiles here. They're starting to clean up a little bit of the periphery of the Lizardmen. Still got this Empire uh, Light Wizard on foot as well, but you can see Oxy all the turns his attention towards him, and it's like, oh no! He's turning the blowpipe sideways. It's a kill shot. Oh, uh, yeah. He could get to Oxyadl with some of these melee units, like get him surrounded by great swords. obviously. You could probably take him down, but it's just going to be tough. Oxyadl is fast enough with the poison and everything. The great swords basically have no hope of catching him unless some of this light cavalry moves to engage him in the meantime, which... I mean, granted, if you charge right now with these Outriders and get them in a surround, maybe bring out in, in these Sigmar Sons, there's still enough of a presence of Saurus on this other side, though, that probably the opportunity is lost, given most of the Great Swords are gone. And I think you would need the Anti-Infantry. I mean, 45 melee defense, well, 41 attack on the Sigmar Sons. They'd get some damage on him in a surround, but uh, the Great Swords have a little bit of a better chance to hit with that Anti-Infantry bonus, I believe. Anyway... At this point, the Empire is starting to run out, run out of ammunition. Most of their units are routed off, and it's looking pretty hopeless. The balance of power is tipping somewhat decisively. Even if the Outriders are continuing to fire, using up the last of their ammunition. Actually do manage to clean up some Saurus. I say things are hopeless right when they seem hopeless. The Empire manages to reform quite a bit of its troops. Come in for another melee engagement here. We'll fast forward a little bit. <laughs> that was quite the screech, whoever <laughs> got ripped apart by a Saurus. Um, yeah, the Great Swords being in here. These War Wagon corpses might block some shots, but uh, for the most part, Oxyobel still has plenty of ammunition to just, you know, snipe away at the flank here. Was that some... Yeah, so I, heard, I thought I heard grenades, but no, in fact, it's... Well, it is grenades, kind of. It's the Chameleon Grenades, right? They're going to come in here, rallied... Rallied Saurus getting in here. There are quite a bit of Outriders and Flagellants, though. I mean, if it wasn't for Oxyadl, the Empire's chances would be pretty solid here, but the fact that Oxyadl can literally just, like, kite everything out here, pretty much, continue to apply leadership damage. Maybe, I mean, maybe if Oxyadl runs out of ammunition, Unbalanced Power has come all the way back towards even. So let's see. Let's see if they can finish Oxyadl. Maybe the Flagellants are actually enough to hold it. Uh, they certainly did not break. From a leadership perspective, almost everything else probably will break. But let's see. Oxyadl's now just about out of ammunition. There's an Amber Spear there to take out some of those Outriders. 
skink cohorts charging in here. Get a charge on the great swords. Great swords do not get a counter charge. Is it going to be enough to actually break them though? See, they aren't taking many hits. There's a hit. Barely any hits at all. Skink cohorts actually turn around and start losing. That's not great. <laughs> Last shots used there, I believe. Suffering from exhaustion, but he does hit a couple of those great swords. Let's see, though. All of a sudden, balance of power is not looking great for Oxyodl. Is it enough at the end of the day? Let's continue to fast forward and see the Doom Skink. Oh, nope. He had a little bit more ammunition there. Nice hit in the back of those great swords. That leadership damage, super, super important for any non unbreakable units at this point. Sigmar's sons, of course, are, are unbreakable, but Flagellants, there's quite a bit of Outriders here, too, still. Let's continue to fast forward. Oxyodl getting surrounded now. There's a handful of Soros coming back. They are in a rage. Nope, they route again. And I think that might be it. That might be it for Oxyodl. He's holding out so far okay. <laughs> this Clutch Skink Priest manages to come in here and break the War Wagons and actually shatter them, and it turns into... An insanely close game here. Uh, but the Flagellants, I mean, Flagellants with the extra weapon strength, Sigmar Sons also. Here come the Great Swords. Another rear attack penalty from the Skink Priest Lower Beast, but how much can he actually do? And it looks like the Empire, in fact, will pull it all the way back. Perhaps, yes, Oxyol does, in fact, route there. So a crazy close game. Big. Thanks to Coops for sending that one in, and what a wild one, honestly. I thought when Marcus went down early on with generating zero value outside of his nets, I mean, I, I thought he was shooting into some, some chameleon skinks there, but I guess he literally didn't shoot anything, uh, which is tough, but <laughs> Empire Infantry spam ends up carrying the day, in particular the Flagellants, honestly, being unbreakable, because if there weren't any unbreakable troops, Coops could have probably got an, enough of a chain route to win, at a certain point, but man, Flagellants more than doubling their value in one case. Sigmar Sun's obviously unbreakable as well. Great swords can be amazing in this matchup if they don't get absolutely raffle stopped, stomped by dinos and lizard cavalry. That was definitely the case here. Uh, the missile presence was pretty heavy. Not everything paid for itself. The Outriders in particular, interestingly enough, I think somebody recently pointed out to me that Outriders actually have better DPS, even once accounting for model count. Uh, you know, over 10 seconds, they have better DPS than handgunners just straight up, which is interesting given that, you know, they also have mobility and the ability to reposition. Now, they are much squishier to a degree, but that is, the mobility does give them a higher uh, level of survivability. So, most of the time now, I think, unless there's sp some specific reason like cannons maybe that you shouldn't take out riders, um, they're more, more vulnerable to a few specific key targets or enemies, I guess. Most of the time, you should be taking Outriders over Handgunners, though, I think. And Wolfsbane uh, definitely showing that here, as all the Outriders were able to very well pay for themselves, uh, and the Handgunners did not. Uh, War Wagon's also pretty decent. Again, if they were... They pretty much used up all their ammunitions and barely paid for themselves. If they were doing the damage that they should be, based on the game files, uh, if they weren't currently bugged, they would have more than paid for themselves, probably, and it wouldn't have been as close, I think, for Wolfsbane. But anyway... Big thanks for Coop for sending that one in. Uh, yeah, from his perspective here, I thought the Clever Girls might have generated more value chasing routing units, but, you know, just a little bit tough. I mean, it is a, a relatively even matchup. Not having any terror outside of the Manticore I do think hurt, though. Like, even just taking a Feral Bastildon, it's only 650 points, and it's enough of a distraction that, uh, yeah, I, I didn't see the Amber Spears were pretty on point as well to uh, help snipe Marcus. But then, I think maybe just Flock of Doom instead of the Manticore summons would have given you the anti-infantry damage. Obviously, hindsight's 2020, but Empire Infantry, especially given that there's not a ton of anti-infantry in this build specifically, would be helpful to kind of thin out, like, the Great Swords and Flagellants and stuff. And with, you know, if, in, instead of that Manticore summon, right, and if you were to have... I mean, granted, you wouldn't have pulled the net and all that fire out initially, so maybe it's hard to say. But definitely, I think, um, I don't know taking a different terror piece and then not necessarily bringing the Manticore Summon and instead bringing Block of Doom would have been quite helpful. But anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. See you next time.